Hello fellow students of History 498, The Silk Roads, Dr. Hockley's class. Our learning objectives today are historical time frame of minting of the gold coin, where the gold coin was minted, who is responsible for minting this gold coin? We're going to learn about what this gold coin did. We're going to learn the actual physical description of the coin and what is the value of this artifact. Our coin was minted in the year 696 to 697 AD, Hedra years 76 and 77. As we've learned from Dr. Hockley's lecture in 6, Hedra is an Islamic year. This came to be because the Prophet Muhammad, founder of Islam, and his followers moved from Mecca to Medina. This became year one on the Islamic calendar, Hedra one. For Muslims, this time began because Muhammad's teaching transformed society, so it was a new world. A little bit of history on the Prophet Muhammad in 610, the angel Gabriel visits him. 622, Muhammad is chased out of Mecca, which is what we learned in Dr. Hockley's class is the true reason for them to go to Medina. And in 632, just 10 years later, the Prophet Muhammad died. Although he left a huge impact on the world that spread in a short amount of time. The gold coin of Abd al-Malik was minted in Damascus. Damascus is in Syria. It's 64 years after Muhammad has died. It is during the Umayyad dynasty. According to the British Museum article, the people of Damascus realized that their world was going to change. Something big was about to happen. Islam had spread quickly. It was all across the Middle East. It was predominant in Egypt, Syria, Iran, and Iraq. Damascus is the capital of the new Islamic Empire at this time, the Umayyad dynasty. To this very day, Damascus is still predominantly Islamic. The Arabic language is dominant at this time. We're talking about 696 and 697, Hedra years 76 and 77. The city is an important city for the merchants on the Silk Roads. At this time, Tiraz designs are also being made and Islamic silks are being produced. According to the Lou book, there are a set of new aesthetic values. The Muslims frowned upon luxuries. They rejected religious and political hierarchy. All people were equal before God. They rejected restricting materials and symbols that were important for marked ranks. And we see that this is very opposite of what was happening in the Byzantine Empire and the Tang Dynasty that were at this same point in history. The Byzantine Empire was predominantly Christian and the Tang Dynasty was predominantly Confucianism for their religions. They practice religious and political hierarchy. They had sumptuary laws enforced. 
And if you remember Dr. Hockley's lecture, that is the status and force fashion. Purple was a status, and it was loved in these two communities or dynasties. However, in the Muslim community and the Muslim dynasty, this was called the blood color, and it was not loved. It was despised in a way. So the person responsible for minting this gold coin is called Caliph Abd al-Malik. He was the ninth Caliph since the Prophet Muhammad. He reigned between 685 and 706 AD. He never got to know Muhammad himself. And I believe that he's one of the first ones who did not know him or interact with him. It was said that he was a great authoritarian, and he was called the leader of the faithful. According to the British Museum article on the gold coin of Abd al-Malik, there is a letter from one of his governors, and it describes him as, quote, The commander of the believers, a man with no weakness, from whom rebels can expect no indulgence. On the one who defies him falls his whip. End quote. There is a coin that he struck after the gold coin of Abdal Malik, and this was a coin of status. On this second coin, you can see his image. It is a Muslim man posing menacingly. He looks as if he's going to draw his sword. He has a whip that's across his waist, as if ready for lashing. And it was meant to inspire fear and respect. It told everybody that this means business, he means business, and that his dynasty was for real. It was significant in establishing the new faith. Khalif Abd al-Malik was very bright. He noticed that there were mistakes made in the Roman and Byzantium Empire. He saw how to exploit the administrative traditions of earlier empires. He knew that in order to succeed, he had to make his empire his own. So through the Roman and Byzantium Empire, he learned how to manage currency. He found that he needed to control the quantity and quality of his monetary supply. He realized the importance of not using hand-me-down currency. And by that, I mean currency from previous dynasties. He knew it was the stamp of authority to have his own coin minted. This would make him a dominant power. It put a place in society, and it actually helps historians place different times with these coins. I have a quote from Professor Hugh Kennedy from the School of Oriental and Afri African Studies. Quote starts, In the years that followed the Prophet Muhammad's death in 632, the caliphs were essentially the political and religious leaders of the Muslim community. All Arab Muslims in the first century of Islam realized that this was a new state, that what went on before wasn't really relevant. These caliphs were not the successors of the Byzantium empires or of the Sassanid king of kings. They might look to these people for solutions and administrative problems, how you collect money, and indeed what sort of money you make, but they wouldn't see themselves as performing the same sort of role. This was a new dispensation. End quote. So what exactly did this coin do? It would come to establish political system. 
it would unify the Muslim regions, and it would also establish a true monetary system, something that was needed in all three of those areas. Imperative. Here we have an example of the Umayyad coins during this time period. We have gold and copper Byzantine coins. This would have been this would have been used in Syria and Egypt. We also have the Sassanian coins. Would have been used in Iran and Iraq. And the Sassanians were they used silver coins. The last picture we have the gold coin of Abdal Malik. And this was used by all Islamic countries. It would unify the Muslim re regions and it was the new Islamic standard. So this coin is small in size but big on impact. It is gold. It is 1.9 centimeters. It contains no figures, only has Quranic inscription. It has an exact weight of 4.25 grams. And this was basically the gold standard that Abd al Malik wanted. These are about as uniform as you can get for this time period. The front of this coin reads, there is no God except God alone. He has no partner. Muhammad is the messenger of God, whom he sent with guidance and the religion of truth, that he may make it victorious over every other religion. The back of the coin reads, God is the one, God is the eternal. He begets not neither is he begotten. The gold coin of Abd al-Malik is a symbol of power. It shows the symbol of historical change. It was a pivotal moment in Islamic history and it's priceless. I hope you all enjoyed the show and have a great day. Thank you.